Nils Anotstin, Ashkan Tikpia Teselili, Nosla Sotsin, Slavi Mistoni. Nevan, Tia Mechmach Tiaske, Keninan Slatoaske, and Nawat Slatoli. In the first two episodes of Nawat Tokan, I talked about Nawat words in English and Spanish. I gave a few examples, but there are many more now with words that we use every day and probably don't even realize it. For example, the English word coyote. It comes from Mexican Spanish coyote, which comes from the Nahuatl word coyote. I say Mexican Spanish because since these words come from Nahuatl, they are Mexican in origin and would have never been used in Spain prior to the Spanish colonization of the Americas. Before colonization, the Mexica and other indigenous peoples wrote books called codices, using a pictographic writing system where certain images represented certain meanings and sounds. During colonization, the Spaniards interviewed Mexica and other indigenous peoples in order to transcribe indigenous languages like Nahuatl into the Latin alphabet. In the last episode, I mentioned Nahuatl is a language and not a dialect. This is certainly true, but like any other language, Nahuatl also has dialects. A person from Puebla might speak Nahuatl differently than a person from Mexico City because they come from different regions and therefore speak different dialects of Nahuatl. Also like any other language, Nahuatl has changed over time and it's spoken differently today than it was during the 16th century. The form of Nahuatl that is spoken today is called modern Nahuatl, whereas the form of Nahuatl that was spoken during the 16th century, when many of the books in Nahuatl were written, is called classical Nahuatl. In this channel, we'll be focusing on classical Nahuatl, and I recommend that you do the same, because classical Nahuatl is more standardized and has more resources to study from, such as the books that I just mentioned. Modern Nahuatl is not as standardized and has more irregularities, which can make learning the language a little more difficult. Nahuatl writing can also be categorized into two main orthographies, classical and modern. Classical orthographies follow the spelling conventions of classical Nahuatl as it was written during the 16th century. On the other hand, modern orthographies, although not as standardized, use more practical spelling conventions. Nevertheless, regardless of which orthography you use when pronouncing Nahuatl, the emphasis always falls on the second to last syllable. In the last episode, I mentioned that many people refer to Aztlan as Aztlan, which is a Hispanicized pronunciation and incorrect if you're following Nahuatl phonetics. The correct Nahuatl pronunciation is Aztlan. Another example is nonansin, which means my venerable mother. The only exception to this rule is when addressing someone. An E is added to the end and the emphasis switches to the E. When calling your mother, you would say nonansine. Let's go over the letters in the Latin alphabet that are used to represent now it sounds. Since Nahuatl was transcribed into the Latin alphabet by Spaniards, classical orthography is pronounced very similar to Spanish. On the left side of the board, we'll be using a classical orthography to show you how each sound is represented in written Nahuatl. On the right side of the board, we'll be using a modern orthography as well as showing you how each word is represented in English and Spanish. This first sound is represented by an A, and it's pronounced A as in at, the Nahuatl word for water. It's similar to the A sound in the English word apple and the Spanish word agua, which also means water. This next sound is represented by a C when before A and O, and Q, U when before E and I in classical orthography. It's pronounced K as in ka, which means to be, kochi, which means to sleep, kema, which means yes, and kisa, which means to leave. In modern orthography, it's represented by a K. It's similar to the K sound in the English word cake and the Spanish word queso, which means cheese. This sound is represented by a C when before E and I and a Z in classical orthography. It's pronounced S as in se, which means one, sipakli, which means crocodile, and solin, which means quail. In modern orthography, it's represented by an S. It's similar to the S sound in the English word stop and the Spanish word sol, which means sun. This next sound is represented by a CH in classical orthography and it's pronounced CH as in Chapolin, which means grasshopper. In modern orthography, it's also represented by a CH. It's similar to the CH sound in the English word chip and the Spanish word Chapolin, which also comes from the Nahuatl Chapolin, which also means grasshopper. This next sound is represented by a CU or UC in classical orthography and it's pronounced Q as in Tecli, which means Lord. As you can see here, 
that cli can be spelled a couple different ways. This is because when the word was being transcribed into the Latin alphabet, they couldn't decide on how to spell it without looking so confusing. This first spelling includes an H, because UH makes a W sound, but this encourages people to pronounce an extra syllable, and the word ends up getting mispronounced as DECUTLI. The second spelling is an attempt to prevent people from pronouncing that extra syllable, but it's equally as confusing because it just looks funny. In modern orthography, it's spelt with a KW. It's similar to the qua sound. In the English word quit and the Spanish word cuando, which means when. This sound is represented by an E in classical orthography and is pronounced E as in elot, which means corn on the cob. In modern orthography, it's also represented by an E. It's similar to the E sound. In the English word elephant and the Spanish word elote, which also comes from the Nahua word elot, which also means corn on the cob. This sound is represented by an H in classical orthography, and in modern Nahuatl, it's pronounced as in the English word house, but in classical Nahuatl, it would be pronounced with the glottal stop, as in e-ekat, which means wind. In modern orthography, it's represented by an apostrophe. It's similar to the H sound, like in the English word honor, and the Spanish word hermana, which means sister. This sound is represented by H-U or U-H in classical orthography, and it's pronounced w, as in huitzili, which means hummingbird, or kuautli, which means eagle, and in modern orthography, is represented by a W. It's similar to the wa sound in the English word win and the Spanish word guacamole. This sound is represented by an I in classical orthography, and it's pronounced E, as in E, which means to drink, and in modern orthography, it's also represented by an I. It's similar to the E sound in the English word speed and the Spanish word C, which means yes. This sound is represented by an L, or two L's when elongated in classical orthography. It's pronounced L or L. For example, Oli, which means movement, or Kali, which means house. In modern orthography, it's also represented by an L or two L's. It's similar to the L sound in the English word ball and the Spanish word leche, which means milk, not like the Spanish word tortilla. This sound is represented by an M in classical orthography and is pronounced M, mm, as in METSLI, which means moon. And in modern orthography, it's also represented by an M. It's similar to the M mm sound in the English word mom and the Spanish word muñeca, which means doll. This sound is represented by an N in classical orthography and it's pronounced M, mm, as in NANTLI, which means mother. In modern orthography, it's also represented by an N. It's similar to the M sound in the English word now and the Spanish word nunca, which means never. This sound is represented by an O in classical orthography and is pronounced O, as in oli, which means rubber. In modern orthography, it's represented by an O or a U. It's similar to the O sound in the English word bone and the Spanish word oso, which means bear. This sound is represented by a P in classical orthography and is pronounced P as in pantli, which means flag. In modern orthography, it's also represented by a P. It's similar to the P sound in the English word popcorn and the Spanish word perro, which means dog. This sound is represented by a T in classical orthography and is pronounced T, as in tatli, which means father. In modern orthography, it's also represented by a T. It's similar to the T sound in the English word top and the Spanish word todavía, which means still. This sound is represented by a TL in classical orthography and it's pronounced ch, as in tlet, which means fire. Try touching the tip of your tongue to the back of the top row of your teeth while blowing air through the sides of your mouth, almost like when the character Sid from the movie Ice Age speaks. In modern orthography, it's also represented by a TL. Well, guess what, guys? There's no English or Spanish equivalent. This sound is represented by TZ in classical orthography and is pronounced tz, as in sintli, which is a Nahuatl suffix, which means venerable. In modern orthography, it's represented by a TS. It's similar to the tz sound in the English word pizza. This sound is represented by an X in classical orthography and is pronounced sh, as in shochit, which means flower. In modern orthography, it's also represented by an X. It's similar to the sh sound in the English word shine. And finally, this sound is represented by a Y in classical orthography, and it's pronounced Y, as in ye, which means three. And in modern orthography, it's also represented by a Y. It's similar to the E sound, 
like in the English word yellow and the Spanish word yo, which means me or I. This has been a guide on how to pronounce Nahuatl words. Keep in mind that the Nahuatl language and its orthographies have not yet been completely standardized. There are other classical orthographies and other modern orthographies that might spell Nahuatl a little differently. For example, in some classical orthographies, the W sound would just be represented by a U instead of an H-U or a U-H. So the word Nahuatl would be spelled N-A-U-A-T-L. In other classical orthographies, a macron is used to represent long vowels, such as the O and Ome, which means two and is actually pronounced Ome. The orthographies we use in this video are just some of the ones that I have seen being used most often during my own research. Remember, this channel focuses mainly on classical Nahuatl, so speakers of modern Nahuatl might pronounce some words slightly different depending on what region their variant of Nahuatl comes from. For example, the letter H represents a glottal stop in classical Nahuatl, but in modern Nahuatl, it might be pronounced like the English H in the word house, or even the Spanish J in the word jarra, and some variants of Nahuatl leave the H out altogether. So the Nahuatl word for no is pronounced atmo in classical Nahuatl, but might be pronounced ahmo, ahmo, or amo in modern Nahuatl. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode when we introduce some more Nahuatl vocabulary. We'll be taking a look at Nahuatl nouns, both singular and plural, as well as how to combine words into compound nouns. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.